It is officially game time for high school football. The 2021 season is kicked off and more than 100 players in Indiana are part of a $3 million study looking at sub concussive head impacts. Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta has more. Kylie. Thank you, Gary. A subconcussive head impact falls below the threshold of a concussion. But do these less intense hits add up over time to cause problems? That's one question they hope to answer. Dr. Kay Kawada is an assistant professor of kinesiology at IU leading the study. And also on the research team is Dr. Jesse Steinfeld, associate professor of counseling and educational psychology at IU. Thank you both for being on the show today. Thanks for having, Thank you for having us. us. All right, Thank Jesse, you. let's start with you. Just give us a big picture uh, explanation. Why is it so important to study these subconcussive head impacts in young people? Yeah, you know, football is such a beautiful sport, right? It's a quintessential team game. It teaches transferable skills like teamwork, toughness, accountability. Uh, but football is a contact sport, and contact tends to worry parents. So we've seen recent declines of participation rates, particularly in youth football. Um, even though we're in an, in an obesity pandemic, and football's number one participation sport for a million kids playing each year, parents have been making decisions not to let their kids play. Um, but these decisions have not been based largely on facts or data. These decisions have been based on fear and reactivity to narratives in society about concussions and CTE. So it's important to provide data so parents can make an informed decision about letting their kids play. And that's what we're trying to do here. That's why it's so important. And I think it's interesting that it's it's not a concussion, so you maybe don't have the overt symptoms that you would have with a concussion. These are um, almost more sneaky injuries. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know, football. You know, it's a collision sport, and we bang into each other. Um, and you know, the narratives about CTE and cumulative impacts are abound in society without enough data to substantiate what you should do to you know mitigate the risk. Okay, so Kay, uh, I know you're studying players at Bloomington North High School, Bloomington South, Edgewood, and Mooresville. Uh, give us a glimpse into the study, what you're doing with the players to collect all this data. Yeah, that's a good question. So this exciting study really include um, more than 100 uh, football players and some control athletes. So we're collecting array of um, brain health data, including brain scans, so MRI scans. That's really sensitive. It's not something that you can get in, in anywhere in the hospital. It's really deep uh, scoping into the brain. And we also collect the fluid sample, biofluid sample, like blood sample, to see the blood biomarkers from that came from the brain. So we can use some of those uh, biochemical signals to study brain health. And also we're testing some functional tests, such as eye tracking, eye movement. And that's combined with the, uh, the um, cutting edge acceler uh, accelerometer and a gyroscope embedded mouth guard that has a computer chip inside and that can detect the magnitude of hits and frequency of hits. So we can longitudinally monitor head impacts and, and the brain health of those um, adolescent players. Now those mouthpieces are absolutely fascinating. Jesse, talk a little bit about the experience that these players are having getting to be part of a national caliber study and also um, maybe what you're hearing from some of the parents too. Yeah, I've been told on multiple occasions by parents and by teachers, you know, man, I'm so excited our kids got to participate in this, right? I'm glad you bring this project here. Now it's a great opportunity for the kids to be exposed to the science of the study, to know what fields in science exist for them to possibly explore. Uh, you know, and the kids dig it. You know, we feed them, we get them together with their friends and teammates. You know, they enjoy hanging out together. It, it, it's building camaraderie. You know, for example, we're collecting saliva. Some turn to a race, a competition, right? They're, they're having fun with it, they're getting into it. Um, and, and back to the point earlier, this project exposed them to ideas. It exposed them to fields they may not know have existed. You know, I couldn't be a sports psychologist. Uh, it exposed them to people who may look like them doing things they didn't know that they could do. And Kay, I think one really interesting part of this study is that one goal is to establish a threshold, almost like a line um, of a number of hits that are safe versus unsafe, uh, almost like a pitch count. Can you explain that? Yes, so this is arbitrarily though. So everybody has um, their tolerance and resiliency. So the, we're trying to establish how many hits are generally safe or unsafe using some of the mouth guard data and neurologic data. But at the same time, I think the football, maybe Jesse, you know, um, Jesse I'm sure I agree with you that, uh, with, with me that um, it's not that simple. So in this study, what's cool about it is we're gonna count those head impacts and magnitude. But at the same time, we're trying to identify individual basis of neurologic 
resiliency and vulnerability. So not everybody should stop with a specific amount of head impact. I think it varies between players, such as Jesse can take more hits than me. And what? why is it? What's the factor that's driving their vulnerability? So in, in order to um, establish threshold, I think we have to identify a lot of different arrays of um, data set and demographic factors. And that's what we're, we're co collecting all that stuff. And that allows us to suggest maybe this level of hit can lead to more chronic effect. And maybe this level of hits can be safe. And that's a really impactful data for policymaking in the future. All right. Well, Kay and Jesse, thank you both for being on the show today. And uh, good luck with the study this season. We'll catch up in four years when you have the official results. Absolutely. Thank you much. Have a great one.